on the EE for J status updates. Um, so just to quickly, quickly recap, uh, if you've been, if you saw me in Ludwigsburg, for example, these some of these slides will be will be familiar. Um, but it was announced back at Java One uh, that Java EE uh, is coming to uh, the Eclipse Foundation. And by all means, please join the discussion at ee uh, ee for j community at uh, It's a very active uh, mailing list with uh, lots of very passionate people. Uh, so uh, we're very happy to welcome this technology to Eclipse. Uh, there, this community is looking for a more open process, better models for collaboration among between the community and vendors, um, and they they are looking to the Eclipse Foundation to provide that. Uh, this year is going to be the year that the, all the technology moves over. Um, it's also um, going to be the year where we are going to create a new process at the Eclipse Foundation um, for doing specs, uh, similar to what the JCP has been doing in the past, uh, as well as creating a new brand uh, and name for what was formerly known as Java EE. Uh, and um, so a lot of interest in getting this technology moved over to Eclipse as rapidly as we can do it. So where are we? Um, so ee for j is the uh, top level project uh, that is going to be hosting this technology. And the focus at the moment is entirely on getting that established as a functioning open source project. Uh, so back in uh, October, the, the board of directors approved the top level project charter. We had two existing projects, Eclipse Link and Yasan, that have been at Eclipse Foundation for a while. We moved those out over to ee for j um, there were nine initial projects proposed. Uh, the final total is going to be somewhere between 35 to 40 new projects. Um, so you can imagine that that's, a, that's onboarding a lot of new technology and, and new, uh, new source code, new committers. Uh, the first nine projects have been created uh, and provisioned. I think two of them have actually got source code into them now. Um, and so we are onboarding these projects as, as rapidly as we can. Um, in the background, there's been a bunch of legal work that's uh, been going on to make all of this possible. So uh, we put, put an agreement in place, for example, with Oracle to transfer ownership of the uh, names of the projects like Glassfish, Jersey, and so on um, to the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, so that's been completed, and uh, we're in the process of actually transferring the, the registrations of Glassfish around the world uh, under the ownership of the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, while we're doing this, uh, as at the same time, we have a community-led process to select a new brand to replace Java EE. Uh, so uh, there's discussions going on um, uh, about that today. Uh, the, the EE for J PMC has whittled it down to a short list of names um, based on input from the community. And we are going at this moment, we are going through trademark review to see which of those names um, could be plausibly trademarked um, and uh, around the world to, uh, to, to uh, be used as the new name. Uh, next up is um, creating a working group. Uh, so uh, for those who are new to Eclipse, working groups are the mechanism that we create member-led governance um, around uh, a project community. And the goal is really to complement what's happening in the open source projects with additional activities related to uh, marketing and branding um, and so on. And in this particular case, there's going to be some special uh, and additional work that's going to be done around creating specifications, um, creating this brand, enforcing the brand through a compatibility program. Um, so this is going to be uh, definitely a, a, a very important and I think quite prominent working group within the Eclipse community. So these are just some of the key principles and assumptions that we're using to drive the creation of the working group and, for that matter, the, the EE4J project community. Um, so open source rules of engagement apply, as you would expect. Uh, compatibility has been a key to the set, set, historical success of Java EE all along, uh, which is you know, roughly 20 years uh, of success around Java EE technology. Uh, so, that's why compatibility will continue to be important to this group. And that will drive a lot of the decisions and the processes that we're going to be making around the spec process, uh, implementing test kits, 
uh, and implementing reference implementations um, to, uh, to, to ensure compatibility of independent implementations down the road. Um, but really, the reason, a big part of the reason why uh, this Java EE technology is coming to Eclipse is around innovation and increasing the pace of innovation uh, and sustainability and agility. Um, so those are really sort of the three, uh, three main goals uh, that we need to execute on over the next couple of years. And so setting the working group up for success on those, uh, on those attributes is going to be uh, a big part of what we have to do this, this year. Um, so just try to talk a little bit about the relationship between the working group and the name up there, ee.next, uh, may or may not be the name. Uh, that's why it's in quotes, and I'm doing little air quotes here as I'm talking. Um, is is that's the, uh, So in terms of the working group, what do they do? They're, so they're member-driven. Um, there's going to be a governance model, and, and around that governance model is, is going to be around creating a budget for the working group and uh, and possibly extra dues for the working group to make sure that they have funds uh, which can be used to support their activities. Uh, they're going to have to define and um, and adopt, define, adopt and implement a spec process um, to replace the role that the JCP has had historically in doing Java EE specifications, uh, create an entirely new brand in the software industry, market that brand, raise awareness about that brand, and then use that brand in compliance and enforcement for the compatibility. Um, and of course, as part of that, uh, implement uh, provide specs under a license that allows independent implementations. On the open source side, EE4J top level project is developer driven. Um, so every project at Eclipse is a self governing meritocracy, um, and they really, um, and that's definitely uh, happening already with EE4J. Uh, they're going to be building the open source code in the TCKs. Uh, the license that's been selected for this group is the EPL version 2, with the secondary license being enabled uh, with the GPL version 2 plus class path exception. Uh, so that's the license that's, uh, that's being used by this group. Uh, that's very similar to the historic license of Glassfish and the other related projects, which previously were CDDL and, uh, and GPL plus class class path exception. Um, open source rules of engagement apply, as we talked about, so meritocracy, et cetera, work, uh, apply here. And the goal, again, really around agility, rapid innovation. Um, we haven't done the spec process yet, but the sort of uh, a priori assumption is that we will be creating specs largely using the open source processes that we use for everything else at Eclipse. Um, and then with the idea that once a, a draft spec has been created by the, um, by the project on the, the EE4J side, it will be referred to the working group for ratification and adoption. Um, and so the, all of the processes that we're talking about here are governed by the Eclipse development process and the IP policy, just like every other open source project at Eclipse. So some key points and some of the things that, uh, and the first one here is I think going to be one of the major um, cultural changes, if you will, uh, relative to the how uh, Java EE has evolved in the past, uh, which is that we're consciously trying to change the culture to be code first rather than spec first innovation. Uh, so the idea is that, you know, let's, Let's get developers to build working code, and once they've demonstrated that it's working, then then and only then do you um, do you work on a spec. Uh, so the, tr the the three attributes of the spec process at the JCP has always been: you have a spec, you have a TCK, and you have a reference implementation. Um, the going in assumption is that that will continue uh, to be the case. Uh, we've had numerous discussions about that with some key stakeholders in the Java EE ecosystem. And the consensus is that, yes, they still want to continue with this. So compatibility still matters very, very much. Uh, but on the other hand, one of the major differences on the spec process is in the current JCP process, there's a notion of a spec lead who is a very powerful entity in the, in the spec process and actually uh, ends up owning all of the IP that's involved with that spec. And, that's not going to be the way we go with the new spec process. 
So this is about lighter weight processes for specs um, and defining profiles and the like. Uh, and really the goal of this group is to increase the pace of innovation and help bring what we used to call or used to think of as enterprise Java um, to a cloud native future. So this is definitely about the future, not just about the legacy.